This gathering, once again, unambiguously confirms the importance of issues of security, preservation of peace and stability, and in that regard, exchange of ideas and opinions on how to make the region, Europe, but also the world safer and more stable. I firmly assure you that the Republic of Serbia remains decisively committed to cooperation and that it continues to the extent possible contributing to the resolving of open regional issues and other disputes, acting thereby as a predictable and reliable factor of stability in the region. This is a very nice speech. I read it yesterday evening and today morning, but it was written by someone else. There's a reason why I'm going to speak without reading anything. I wanted to say, you see now, my advisors are killing each other right now, and I wanted to say, President van der Bellen, once again, thank you very much for coming to Serbia. I'm really honored and privileged to have you here in Belgrade because I had a chance of learning many things from President van der Bellen, and uh, I hope that he's going to come more often to Serbia, because there are so many Serbs, including me, going to Vienna on a monthly basis. He can come at least twice a year to Belgrade. I would like to stress only two important issues. One is the situation in the region of the Western Balkans and all the fears that we are facing with I'm speaking mainly about Serbia, but not only about Serbia. After the failure in, of a referendum in Macedonia, after the elections in Bosnia and Herzegovina, I dare to say that we need to have stronger role of European Union, otherwise European Union won't be that type of a dream and a beacon of democracy, freedom and everything else that we were striving for as it used to be. What happened in Macedonia? It was very much obvious that deal that two factions reached. It was a good deal for both countries. It didn't pass. People didn't like it. Instead of confessing that, instead of admitting that, I know we were playing with different mathematician formulas, lying ourselves about a majority on this or the other side, and one of the reasons was that something that was offered to ordinary people was not that attractive as people from Europe thought. Is it true? Yes, it's true. You're offering, okay, now you're going to be a part of NATO. We have no aspirations of becoming a part of NATO. That's why I'm going to put it aside but you're going to become to open negotiating process with European Union, people said. No, okay. We are in the habit of listening to these stories for the last 10 years, and what happened? Nothing. Nothing. We need something tangible. We need something that people in that country will see with their own eyes, Will feel, will feel in their own pockets and I think that that was something that was missing and bringing all the people, all different people from European Union, that was great support. But as you can see, even that was not enough, which means that we are, that we need to offer something substantive to all the people in the Western Balkans, which means that it has to be, when someone says something, 
It has to be reliable promise and it has to be reliable deliverance. When you say to someone, okay, if you fulfill that, then you're going to be a member of EU, then we're going to open more chapters, then we're going to do this or this, it has to be fulfilled. And people need to see it. Do you really think, when we speak about Serbia, that if you're going to say, oh, now we're going to open two chapters, or we're going to open three chapters, even Susanna is laughing. I'm smiling. It's not fun for me. Do you really think that someone cares about it in this country? Do you really think that it's the real news for the people here? No, it's not. Because nobody knows, nobody knows what is going to happen after that. People know that we would like to belong to European Union type of society. People know that that's the main reason why we are on EU path. We have never been begging European Union for getting more and more money. And we are profoundly grateful to European Union for all the donations that they provided to us, for everything they did for us, particularly regarding terrible floods we were facing with in 2014. I'm saying this because we need to do something big in the Western Balkans and we need to offer something substantive for the future of the Western Balkans. And it's not only Serbia, it's not only Macedonia and it's not only Bosnia. And if we underestimate all the other factors and it's people's will and it's people's disappointment that we didn't count on I'm very much afraid that we'll be able to keep stability and tranquility in the next 10 and 20 years. Serbia will do its utmost, Serbia will do its best to preserve, to maintain peace, stability and tranquility in the region. We'll do our best to develop good relationship with our neighbors with all the others in our region and uh, Serbia will firmly stay on its EU path and what I was speaking about EU I think it's very important to be said it's our in a way inner or internal democratic discussion and that's what I see from inside that's what I can feel every single time when I go to Brussels Five years ago, when I was going to Brussels, everyone was listening to everyone. Today, I'm afraid that no one in Italy is listening to anyone from France, and vice versa. And you have a dozen of examples of that type in today's Europe. I wish you very good work, dear Sonia. Thank you for inviting us here and uh, I hope that uh, open minds and open words can open new gates for the future of this region. If we would hide, if we would conceal up everything from our public audiences and from our people, we will get nowhere. Once again, honor to have a chance speaking to you, dear Pavel Demos. I wanted to say that uh, speaking about justice and judiciary issue and reforms that are needed to be taken in our country, I'm not going to mention the other countries. Yeah, people are right. People are very much right, and that's why we do together many things with OSCE, with European Union. That's why we sent our constitutional amendments to the Venice Commission. We got their final opinion, and I think that we'll go with this proposal to the Parliament as soon as possible. It's about days or weeks, not about months. There are many other things to be done. I'm certain that 
will do it. But just to add on this, I do admit the situation. It's not only that it's not perfect. It has to be very much improved. But is it everywhere in Europe better than here? I wouldn't bet on that. Because speaking about human rights, speaking about free press and everything else, there were some claims even that in Serbia, Serbia would be the first country in which someone would kill journalists or something like that. Then we saw several countries, European Union countries or EU candidates, where very prominent journalists were either killed, either wounded, but none of these countries were Serbia or was Serbia. Well, you know, it's, we are in the habit of red herring and hypocritical approach towards this region and towards our, our country as well. It means we have a lot of on, on our agenda. We need many things to improve. We need to invest hard work into that. We are far from being perfect. We are not Germany. We are not France. We are not uh, Denmark, Netherlands. We are very much away from mentioned countries. But to tell you the truth, there are some countries that are not twice better than we are, at least. And there are some countries that are even worse than us. And if you see economic data, there are many countries that, are, that were doing much better in the past than Serbia. But today, wouldn't agree on this. And you can see that Serbia is doing much better than many EU countries, speaking about fiscal policy, budget discipline, uh, public debt, all the other important issues, including growth rate. We are doing it in a very proper way. But what we need, and that's why I was insisting only on this, it's more important for us, it's to keep peace, stability and tranquility, and that's what we are very much afraid of here. No, we are not afraid of a hard work will deliver good results in the future, even in these fields, in these, issue, in these issues that you have just mentioned. Although, I would say, if you read European Commission comments on justice and judiciary issue, I would, I would use much worse words to depict situation in Serbia than European Commission did, to tell you the truth. There are some political issues which they are using for their own purposes. But speaking about this, they are quite right. I'm not the very best person to make comments on this. There are bigger fans of US in our state leadership. But uh, rationally speaking, we have good relationship with US. They started to listen to us at least. We have different views on Kosovo issue. It's, we are on totally opposite sides. Let's speak very openly regarding formation of Kosovo army and some other issues. But there, there has been progress made recently, and I can say that we had a chance of speaking openly and sincerely and honestly with, with the new American administration, with their representatives, and hopefully we'll be able to continue, to continue in this way. And, and that's it, you know. You can say that some people might say that we act from time to time as an elephant in a glass door. You can say more, more or less the same for American policy, but I see that we need to work with them. They are 
the real superpower. We are small guys from the Balkans, and we are okay when they want to hear us, when they want to listen to us. I don't have huge expectations, but I have some hopes. That's, that's what I can say as a president of Serbia. What we need, and just I think that my statement, introductory statement was very clear. So speaking about European Union, I do acknowledge that there are many people within European Union that have been taking a lot of efforts into creating and making better atmosphere between Western Balkan countries and territories and the European Union. But uh, it's not enough. It's not enough. And if I may intrude into President van der Bellen's question, uh, you see the difference. And let's say 2001, 2002, you had support for NATO 32% in this country. Today it's 4%. You had support of 80% for the European Union. Today it's around 42, 43. Anyway, if there would be a referendum, we would get 55. It's, I'm not saying that that's in jeopardy, that's, that's in peril. No, it's not. But uh, people that are advocating our EU path, including myself, are doing that because they're doing it in a rational way and they see it as a rational solution. It's not anymore a sort of a dream. It's not anymore something that people cannot wait of seeing the results or uh, finding a final date of accession or something like that. No, it's not the case anymore. And I remember Berlin conference in the capital of Germany five years ago. We all had, I remember my talks with Eddie Rama, we all had great hopes. We thought that we were in a position to, of resolving all our infrastructural problems, economical problems. And I still admire Angela Merkel of bringing all these ideas to one conference. And at least we, one day a year, we always remind ourselves of our obligations and what we missed in the last years and what we need to do in the upcoming years. But the problem is that we, we are going to start building this highway of peace next month in this part that is under control of Serbia. But we, need, we needed to wait for this for almost six years. For almost six years. People need tangible results. People need to see something. People need to see new roads, new railroads. People need to see I'm not, we, are not asking, we are not asking for more money from the European Union, although I saw some EU countries always fighting only for money. And I witnessed that several times. We have never ever asked for that. What we were asking for that was a sort of mutual respect. You have it from our side, and that's what we need from the side of European Union and then people and we need reliable politicians. That's why, why, I was, why I was many times criticized here in our country because I was saying good things about Angela Merkel and some people would say today you see your Angela is falling down, declining in all the numbers. So, so what? It doesn't change my mind and I don't care what numbers are showing. I see what people are doing, and there are very few people that are really caring about Western Balkans, very few people that are really, really listening to the people of the Western Balkans. And I know that we are small guys. Who are we, you know, as the President said, 40 billion GDP. It's nothing. It's really nothing. It's twice and more than that worse than Slovakia, you know. It's it's, 
it's nothing. But now we started in the recent two, three years, we started improving our growth rates, our public debt ratio, GDP ratio, and everything else. It's just a start. We still didn't reach the level of our GDP before 1990. It shows how terribly we were hit with all the wars, with all the crises we were facing with in the last 30 years. And if we'll keep the same growth rate, the same level of our growth rate in the next, let's say, 14 years, that's what we counted, Alexander, uh, we're going to double our GDP. We're going to double our GDP. That'll mean something. That'll be a totally different country. That's what we need. That's why I was insisting on this sort of tranquility and peace maintainers. And we cannot do it to answer once again on your question without U.S. support. Sure. That's why we need U.S. It's, it doesn't matter whether they like us, whether we like them or not. I don't care whether they like us. And, I, and they, they care much less whether we like them or not. But it's important to talk to them. It's important to find common solutions, common denominator in some important issues. That's what we need to do, and that's our job. Without U.S. reaching solutions in the region, without Russia, without European Union, it's, and we need and we are striving to do our job under the roof and under the auspices of EU, of course. But you, if there is someone that might say you can do it without Washington command, this is absolutely impossible. That's why we need America, and that's why I'm begging Americans just to take care of all important issues in this region in a way that will keep stability and tranquility.